Malaysian, with all due respect, would like to continue this segment in English as we are about to speak yeah. three decades of better relation between Malaysia and South Africa. And here we have the High Commissioner of South Africa, Tuan Yang Tuan Dev Makamson. Good morning, Your Excellency. How are you? Selamat pagi, Irfan. Selamat, selamat pagi. pagi. <laughs> ha, nampak, kita muda selamat pagi yes. dulu, Irfan. How are you today, sir? Very well, thank you, Shafika. And thank you so much for the opportunity of being with you today. Excellent. Ah, excellent. Yes, Your Excellency, time has passed. So it has been 30 years, the diplomatic relation between Malaysia and South Africa. Mm -hmm. So as Malaysia, we would like to know the history behind it. How does it happen? And maybe what is the future for us? Sure. It's a very special day today because it was exactly 30 years ago mm -hmm. that we signed the diplomatic relations between our two countries. But of course, 30 years of diplomatic relations, but hundreds of years of history. So going back to the 17th and 18th centuries during the time of the Dutch colonial power, the Dutch brought people from the Malay archipelago to South Africa. And that's why today in South Africa we have a community called the Cape Malay community. Yeah, mm. yeah. And that just has established the cultural bonds, the histori historical bonds, mm. even the cuisine. We have a cuisine called the Cape Malay cuisine. Mm. We even have words such mm. as uh, blatjan, pisang, oh. <laughs> which have made their way from wow. this part of the world to South Africa. Yeah. Okay. And then of course if we look at the time of the apartheid era, Malaysia was very strong in the anti-apartheid movement in solidarity with achieving the liberation mm. of South Africa and we'll be forever grateful for that support. Mm -hmm. Obviously then once apartheid was finished and we achieved our liberation, then Malaysia and South Africa could work together in the normal diplomatic relations space. And from the time of Tun Dr. Martir, we had an extremely strong relationship with Malaysia, yeah. mm. particularly based on the relationship that Tun had with President Mandela, President Mbeki at the time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, over the years, since about 2008 and the financial crisis, mm. we have lost strategic focus on each other. Mm. So where we are at now is to make sure that politically we bring back the strategic focus. And that's why in March this year in the Foreign Office consultation, we agreed that we would revive the relationship, strengthen the relationship. And I think with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, he's focused again on Africa, on South Africa, and on tightening the relationship between Malaysia and South Africa in all fields, politically, economically, and so on. Yeah. So the future, I think, is very bright. Mm. I think the biggest question now is what, is what are the opportunities for Malaysian and also Malaysian businesses in terms of trade and investments? Sure. I think the one sign that things are getting better is that last year we doubled mm. the trade between South Africa and Malaysia. Mm. And the biggest opportunity is in the halal sector. Mm. Uh, South Africa, although we have a small Muslim population, we have about 60% of all our retail products are halal certified. Yeah. <clears throat> we also have, I think there's, we're in the top five to seven global halal producers. Mm. And three of our halal authorities are um, acknowledged by Jakim. Mm. Mm. So the, the opportunities in halal are massive. Mm. Mm. And it's not just in the bilateral trade. We also have a market of 1.2 billion people in Africa, mm. where we are united now under the African continental free trade area. Yeah. And within Africa, there's more than 500 million Muslims. Mm. So we believe that working together as South Africa and Malaysia, mm. using South Africa as a halal hub, and with the linkages we have into Africa in terms of our infrastructure, the retail, the banking, these massive opportunities where South Africa and Malaysia working together hmm. can help satisfy the need for halal products in Africa. Yeah. And of course, we regard Malaysia as the gateway to ASEAN. So the opportunities are both ways in the halal sector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, it's been three years you are here in three years, Malaysia. Yes. Three years in Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. How was it? I've loved Malaysia. You love, yeah, Malaysia. I love Malaysia. Thank you so I much. First I'm came, glad. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I first came in 2003 as part yeah. of a delegation with President Mbeki mm. to the NAM summit in Malaysia. Uh. And we met Tun Dr. Martir at that time. Uh, and I've loved Malaysia ever since. So I was very happy yeah. when I heard I was being posted to Malaysia and I've enjoyed every minute. Thank you so much yeah. for, for coming here. Your Excellency, we would like to know about the demography between Malaysia and South Africa. Mm. How, how does it differentiate between each other? Well, of course, we've got double your population. Mm. We, we're about 62 million and I think you're about 32 million. Mm. But in terms of the makeup of the country, we are very similar. Mm. Mm. We are both multicultural, uh, multilinguistic, mm. multi-religious. So we have the same issues and dynamics mm. of how to unify a country and unify a people mm. behind the common symbols of what it means to be a country. Mm. And to look past the 
uh, things that divide us mm. to the things that unite us. And that's why the fact that we won the Rugby World Cup yeah. mm. is so important to South Africa. Mm -hmm. It's more than just rugby, it's more than just sport. Yeah. It's a symbol of unity, it's a symbol of hope mm. for people that have gone through very tough times. So for us, as I've said, the, the rugby win is not just a rugby win. <laughs> it's about bringing the country together, uniting the country behind one ideal of what it means to work together to overcome challenges. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is a really good platform mm. for your excellencies because we need to understand and we need to know stands for South Africa, mm. especially in Israel and Palestine mm. uh, politics and <coughs> war issues. Mm. How is it actually? We're exactly the same as Malaysia. Yeah. So what Malaysia says is almost word for word what South Africa says, that mm. we desperately need to stop the killing. Mm. We need to have a cessation of, of hostilities. We need to ensure humanitarian access mm. so that people can have the medical need, they, yeah. the medical uh, things that they need. They can have access to food, to electricity, to water, to hospital mm. care. And of course, we need a long-term solution to the problems in Palestine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, our cabinet has just announced that we will be withdrawing our diplomats from uh, Tel Aviv. It's yesterday's news, right? That's yeah. right, yes. And uh, we're talking about what to do with the Israeli ambassador in South Africa. Mm. Yeah. So we take the matter very seriously. And we believe that in Malaysia, because our positions are so similar, mm. that we have a strong partner to work together to make sure that the killing stops, uh, but that in the long term, the rights of the Palestinian people are upheld. Yes, because mm. it's not about the war, it's really about the genocide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm. about a mass killing, about innocent mm. children and mm. women. So we have to stop this now. Yeah. Exactly. Or, or not, it will be so uh, bad for mm -hmm. maybe uh, our country as well, the reputation mm. yeah. of the country. So mm. over the last few years, the geopolitical um, landscape has been shifted recently, mm. tremendously. Uh, can you give your perspective of South African... Uh, Other organisations like the IMF and the World Bank and the World Trade Organization. These need to reflect the realities of today, not the realities of yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. So BRICS, for example, is an initiative where countries of the South are coming together saying that we can work together mm. on the common needs and concerns of the developing world, mm. of the countries of the South. Mm -mm. And the one thing that the, the media narrative misses is BRICS is not against anything. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been set up to be in competition with something, to oppose something. It's just countries coming together to say that we need to cooperate yeah. on the common global challenges. Mm. And whether it be climate change, whether it be global pandemics, mm. or whether it be the reform of the United Nations Security Council, mm. these are issues that we believe we can work on together. Mm -hmm. And now with the expansion of BRICS, mm. I think we're reaching a critical mass of countries that have um, influence in the international community where hopefully we can get the international community to be more reactive to what the South needs yeah. Yeah. and what we need to develop rather than always being controlled by narratives from somewhere else. Yeah, 30 years is not a small number yeah. between mm -hmm. Malaysia and South Africa that for sure. Moving forward, what's next for us? Yeah. Well, I think as I've said, the biggest thing is to make sure we now maintain the strategic focus between ourselves. Mm and to make sure that politically we are reaching out to each other at the highest levels. We are meeting and engaging on issues that are really of concern to us. Yeah. Politically, bilaterally, economically, but as I've said, even in the international community. Yeah. How can we cooperate on Palestine? Mm. How can we cooperate in the United Nations or in the G20 mm. to make sure that the G20, uh, Malaysia not being a member, how can we as South Africa, as we do with Africa, Mm -hmm. How can we make sure that the concerns of all countries of the South yeah. are being taken forward in uh, institutions like the G20? Mm -hmm. So as I've said, the, the, the BRICS initiative is a very exciting initiative because it brings together countries that have influence mm -hmm. and it also is establishing institutions like the BRICS New Development Bank that for the first time provides us with options. Mm -hmm. So the other false media narrative was about de-dollarization. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. BRICS yeah. has never said we're going to de-dollarize. Yeah. Exactly. All that we were saying was that when we trade with each other mm. <clears throat> and when we invest in infrastructure projects, mm. we will use our national currencies mm -hmm. okay. rather than being reliant on the dollar because mm -hmm. often the costs of an infrastructure project over the years mm is based on the fluctuations in the dollar and your interest repayments. Mm. Whereas if you're raising money in your own currencies mm. to pay for those loans, mm. it becomes much more affordable. Yeah. And even Prime Minister Anwar has been talking about within ASEAN, mm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Using national currencies yeah. for trade and infrastructure. Yes. So it's not about de-dollarization. It's yeah. about what's in our own best interest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, Your Excellency, maybe your last word and hope to, trans to strengthen our diplomatic relation between Malaysia and South Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, as I've said, we have a long history together. We have a similarity in terms of our countries, in terms of what is important to us, and in terms of what we need to do going forward. Mm -hmm. So there's so much we can work on. There's so many opportunities. And as I've said, apart from the halal sector, we can cooperate in things like science, technology, and innovation, mm -hmm. where we're both looking at renewable energy. We're both working on things like green hydrogen and hydrogen fuel cell technology. There's things we can do there. Uh, South Africa has a massive project called the Square Kilometre Array, yeah. which puts us at the forefront of the world in handling big data. Mm. And there's opportunities there where we can cooperate. Yeah. And then, of course, the traditional sectors, defence and so on, where we can continue the work. Mm. But I think as Malaysians and South Africans, we feel like brothers and sisters. Yes. We feel very comfortable with each other. There's so much we can be doing together. Yeah. And all it needs is a mindset change mm. where we see the strategic value of each other for each other. Yeah. yeah. We're looking forward for the next maybe 120, of 200 course. years. Yes. I won't be here then. Because <laughs> we have so much Me in too. common. <laughs> so we have to make it done. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for your time here. Terima kasih. Terima kasih banyak.